So, I welcome you to the lecture 23rd organic vegetable crop management. So, uh, in this lecture uh, we will be discussing about management of uh, vegetable crops, field crops, uh, some plantation crops and also uh, organic uh, meat production. So, earlier lectures we have given introduction to uh, organic uh, input management, special the uh, nutrient management, how we can supply in general for the crops based on the nitrogen, phosphorus and potash recommendations and also the planting techniques uh, which, which can follow generally for the organic farming uh, systems. Uh, so, in this we will discuss very selectively for a few crops and uh, mostly many crops follow similar patterns in, in with reference to the uh, management under field conditions. So, uh, coming to organic uh, vegetable crop management, we will discuss here two crops, uh, mainly potato and the uh, tomato crops. So, other crops like your cabbage, cauliflower, some you know, the management practices and nutrient management, they uh, somehow are similar and but may be specific difference may be there in some crops. Uh, if you go for the potato, uh, in a, as a brief introduction, this is a uh, family belongs to Solanaceae. Uh, the center of origin say is maybe in South America and especially the climate requirement it is a cool season crop. Uh, it is a long day plant, uh, it is grown during winter seasons where the flowering uh, takes place when the day length is it was the increasing trend uh, uh, after December as uh, the day length was increasing during that period the flowering takes place, it is a long day plant. Uh, it grows well in temperature uh, in the range 15 degree Celsius to uh, 25 degree Celsius. Uh, high day temperature, especially 20 25 degree Celsius, is good for the vegetable growth. And while the night temperature is around 15 to 20 degree Celsius, is good for the tuber formations. So, these are the uh, climate requirement of potato because we usually grow in the winter season, so rubby season, such so a cool season crop. Soil. Uh, as the underground, uh, the tuber formation takes place and it needs a well aerated and porous soil so that it can facilitate better growth of the or the better the swelling of the tuber, the tuber formation. That means, well drained sandy loam soils, uh, the medium loam soils are most preferred for the potato cultivations. Uh, soils should be traveled, well aerated, fairly deep and well supplied with organic manures. It should because uh, having the high porosity uh, that favors the uh, potato uh, cultivations because uh, it helps in the potato growth, tuber formations and tuber swelling. Alkaline or the saline soil is not suitable uh, for potato cultivations. Uh, usually the pH uh, acidic range somehow there is a pH 5 to 6.5 say as these conditions uh, they can uh, the you can avoid the scab disease of the potato crop. And propagation such so a planting technique you see the usually in case of uh, organic farming you must use the disease free seeds uh, well sprouted and uh, the seed size around the tuber size may be 30 to 50 gram each tuber. And the plant tubers at uh, the spacing of 20 to 25 centimeter in the row and may be around 60 centimeter uh, in between the row and seed rate is usually uh, 20 to 25 quintals per hectare. Uh, land because uh, it is well aerated and well friable soil, loose soil. So, you can go for the primary tillage and the secondary tillage operations to have a loose soils for planting of the uh, potato tuber. Uh, the, the plowing depth is around 25 centimeter and can expose the uh, to sun. Uh, the soil should have higher pore space and that should offer least resistance to tuber development. That means, a well aerated, loose soil, friable soil, mainly loamy soils are suitable. Uh, for the better growth and the development of tuber. Planting, so planting method we follow uh, uh, the generally the three planting say pl planting in ridges or planting flat bed uh, uh, method or you can have a flat surface as you say followed by ridges. So, uh, on ridges means you can make a ridge and furrow systems as you can see the uh, picture we have made the ridge followed by the furrow by the special implements we can make the ridge and furrow system and planting can be the distance between the ridges uh, it may be around 45 to 60 centimeter that is a uh, row spacing and the, uh, the tuber spacing in each row the tuber can be spaced around 25 to 30 centimeter. 
and the here the planting can be done because ridge planting planting can be done on the ridges the purpose of having the ridges the ridge planting uh, because especially in case of the uh, the areas uh, that suffers from the high rainfall so planting and ridges we can avoid the water accumulations because if you uh, plant on the flat surface in case of the high rainfall area even if uh, suppose after planting if there is a uh, expectation of the heavy rain in that case ridge planting is preferred uh, so that the water does not accumulate water um, is drained out to the furrow areas and the potato tube or the seeds can be protected from the uh, uh, water accumulations or the high high water in that case uh, uh, usually uh, ridge planting is preferred for the product cultivations and the flat bed method is also followed where the uh, flat uh, make the shallow furrows like this this is you can say the uh, make a shallow furrow and put the product seeds and cover it so this is usually followed in the areas where there is less rainfall or the no chance of uh, heavy rainfall uh, um, is taken is expected in those areas we can go for the flat bed method but even though you go flat bed method after emergence of the product tuber again you have to go for the ridge formation earthing and the ridge formation then planting and flat surface followed by ridges also we can do the planting and the make the ridges so that in that case also water uh, uh, does not uh, re, is not retained water gets drained to the furrow areas that way the potato can we can save the potato tuber from the uh, if there is a heavy rain so uh, these are the uh, method of planting but out of, out of all this methods planting on the ridges is mostly uh, uh, favored or the preferred as it can it can avoid the water accumulations in case uh, there is heavy rainfall uh, so uh, if you go for the nutrient management uh, as you have organic farming we, you go for the organic nutrient management from different sources so uh, the potato is a heavy feeder that needs the heavy fertilizer dose uh, the chemical fertilizer dose for potato is say, around 120 kg nitrogen 100 kg p2o5 and 150 kg k2o per hectare and if, if to maintain the yield as of the chemical farming through organic farming we need to supply this much of nutrient to the crop as a general recommendations but this can vary uh, based on the locations soil type and also the crop needs as you discussed earlier classes how to uh, calculate the nutrient requirement of the crops uh, looking at the soil conditions soil fertility and also at the crop needs the nutrient uh, uh, crop needs then you can calculate the uh, nutrient requirement so it's the general recommendations for the soils of the medium fertile soils uh, uh, soils 120 kg nitrogen 100 kg p2o5 150 kg k2o per hectare if you want and as you see potato that's a uh, important nutrients the potas potas uh, as helps in the making the disease resistance drought tolerance in the plant and also that uh, potas help in the swelling of the tuber the better growth of tubers potato uh, that's a uh, uh, needs the potas so potas requirement is very high for the potato crop so when you calculate the organic sources of nutrients usually we take potas as a baseline nutrient to decide or to quantify the nutrient requirement of the crop so this dose based on the potash contents or the of the uh, organic manure for example if you uh, uh, see the farmyard manure uh, the amount of farmyard manure required to meet the 150 kg k2o per hectare uh, farmyard manure contains potash 0.5 so based on the potash content of farmyard manure it is calculated as 25 tons per hectare uh, farmyard manure is required to meet the potash requirement uh, uh, as 150 kg k2 per hectare i will explain how to calculate this one uh, the uh, farmyard manures point uh, having 0.5 percent k content uh, to meet the potash of 150 kg per hectare if you see uh, the fym if the calculation for this uh, potash if you see fym farmyard manure that contains 0.5 percent k and your requirement is for the potato for the potato crop around 150 kg k2o per hectare so per one hectare potato crop to get to get 150 kg k2o through fym how much fym will be required 
So, FOM decay, uh, contains 0.5 percent K that should be converted to K2O. So, conversion of K to K2O that means uh, uh, 1.2 into K that is equal to K2O. If you want K2O, so K multiplied the factor 1.2 that gives the K2O content. So, by the FM contains 0 0.5 percent K means that contains K2 is equal to 0 0.5 into 1.2 is equal to 0 0.6 percent K2O. So, that means the FM contains 0 0.6 percent K2O, we need 150 kg K2O, then the requirement of FIM. FYM is equal to 100 divided by 0 0.6 into 150. So, 150 kg K2 is required, you can get the 0 0.6 kg K2O from 100 kg FYM. So, 150 kg O, so that gives, gives the, the requirement of FYM per 1 hectare. Accordingly, we calculate the the FIM that that is required for one hectare of crop field. So similarly, we calculate the all other sources of uh, organic uh, fertilizers based on the any uh, nutrient does a reference level, um, value, either the potash for the potato. Similarly, some other crops we may we may decide the nutrient calculation based on nitrogen or phosphorus content. So uh, so this way, uh, as you have calculated this one, the so, likewise, if you can see the FIM that comes around 25 tons per hectare uh, based on the uh, potash contents of this FIM 0.5 percent or K2O contents 0 0.6 percent and to have the 150 kg K2O per hectare, we have used 25 tons of FIM per hectare. And similarly, for the other uh, rock enriched BC that contains uh, if that contains around potash 3.5 percent and looking at the calculating the K2O contents, we can we can calculate the amount of enriched BC required is 4 tons per hectare. Microbial enriched BC that contains 1.6 percent uh, K and the requirement to meet the 150 kg K around 8 tons per hectare. Similarly, the conventional VC calculation comes around 11 tons per hectare. So, uh, as we have discussed, if you use the FOM, you need the higher quantity around 25 tons per hectare to have the same yield to maintain the yield level as of chemical fertilizer. But using the vermicompost or enriched vermicompost, you can minimize the use of organic uh, resources like no rock enriched vermicompost, the amount is only 4 tons per hectare. Instead of 25 tons per hectare, you can go up to 4 tons per hectare. That way, you have the less requirement of the organic sources. At the same time, you can meet the level of productions. And in addition to uh, meet, uh, meet, as you calculate based on K requirement, in addition to meeting the requirement of uh, uh, potash, nitrogen and phosphorus, using the vermicompost or the organic sources, that also supply many micronutrients, almost all the micronutrients in addition to enzymes, hormones and antibiotic that helps in the promoting uh, not only the growth of the crops, but also the secondary metabolites contents or the quality of the crops at the same time that protect the crop from infestation of many insect pests and diseases. So, that is what the, um, the, the beauty of the organic farming or the organic fertilizer applications. So, the, uh, the way if you go for enrichment using enriched fertilizers, we can minimize the, the quantity of the fertilizer requirement uh, by uh, maintaining the similar yield levels and also uh, having a better quality of the crop. So, this is how to calculate the nutrient requirement for the crops. When you go to the uh, in addition to that, you can, you can go for other nutrients also applications, application biodynamic compost that is at 5 ton per hectares at the time of land preparations and neem cake around 250 kg per hectare at the time of land preparations. Then biofertilizer like azospirillums and the 
फर्स्ट पर बैक्टेरिया आफ्टर ट्वेंटी फाइव के जी पर हेक्टर एट द टाइम ऑफ लैंड प्रिपेरेशन स्प्रेइंग ऑफ काउ पैट पिट एट फाइव के जी पर हेक्टर इन हंड्रेड लीटर ऑफ वाटर्स ऑन डिफरेंट डेज एट अराउंड फिफ्टीन डेज इंटरवल स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम दी फोर्टी फाइव डे आफ्टर प्लांटिंग सो डूइंग दिस सो डूइंग दिस बिकॉज ऑल दी ऑलमोस्ट ऑल दी ऑर्गेनिक फर्टिलाइजर्स वी यूज टू अप्लाई एट दी टाइम ऑफ लैंड प्रिपेरेशन एंड दैट शुड बी अप्लाइड इन दी रिजेस where we are going to plant the crop so on the ridges the ridge area or the where the, uh, the seedling the, the tuber the potato seed or potato tuber has to be planted in those area this organic manures has to be mixed at the time of the final land preparations and the ridge can be prepared prepared and the potato can be planted and sometimes we go for the top dressing also uh, because no um, it, uh, during the land preparation uh, it can be mixed well it is advised to go for the basal applications and some cases top dressing also effective but yield wise it almost remains same either you go for basal applications or the top dressing may be after uh, 30 days or the 40, 40 days one more application during the adding up of the crops on uh, having top dressing of organic fertilizer it has a added advantage that it can have a residual effect for the subsequent crop and cropping systems where you can minimize the use of the uh, inputs special nutrient inputs for have a better growth if you are planning for the cropping system management so uh, so this is the uh, about the nutrient management uh, management in case of the uh, potato also use some growth regula regulators they can enhance the growth of the crop there is a foliar spraying of panchagar beer that's also a formulation is made cow dung 7 kg and ghee of cow ghee so 1 kg cow urine 10 liters cow milk 3 liters and cow pot 2 liters that is mixed with 10 liters of water and it is spread at the rate of 3% that means 30 ml per liter of water uh, at 10 days interval from the uh, first month after planting so this can be uh, regularly uh, spread at 10 days interval so that you can have a growth regulator promotes the growth of the crop at the same time it protect the crop from many uh, pests and diseases and also you can spray the vermi wash as we discussed 10%, 10% vermi wash uh, Uh, five times from the uh, at 15 days interval from the one month after sowing or the planting of the crops, um, vermi wash can be mixed with water, and this can be sprayed as a canopy uh, over the crop canopy. It can provide the nutrients, as well as the enzymes, hormones, as well as the the insecticidal properties for the for the crop. And plant protection, so if the pests uh, uh, like the potato is uh, up aphids is a major problem. the foliar spray of 10% gar garlic chill extract that means the uh, 10 uh, uh, around the 100 ml per liter of water 10 ml per uh, the 100 ml of water or the 1 liter of water this 100 ml the extract can be put and that can be sprayed in regular intervals so garlic chill extract already we have discussed in the previous class so you can use the garlic chill extract or the 3% neem oil that means the neem oil 30 ml per liter of water can be can be sprayed to control the aphid attack for the potato and the tuber moth as a potato tuber moth as you see here the potato tuber moth so this can be controlled by uh, planting tubers in the uh, deeper around 10 10 to 15 cm when you planting make sure that so the tuber does not get exposed to the uh, out, outside atmosphere uh, so this uh, around 10 to 15 cm depth tuber should be planted install the pheromone trap around 20 numbers per hectare of the field Uh, to attract the the tuber moth, potato tuber moth, and so up to protect the uh, exposure of the tubers from the sunlight, so the sun we can have a adding up uh, that can usually go for the adding up uh, regularly, so that the we can provide the good soil, friable soils to the base of the potato crop that facilitate better growth and development. That can be done to avoid potato tuber moth, uh, tuber moth egg lying in the exposed tuber. and the, uh, to control foliar damage spray 5% neem seed kernel extract that means the 50 ml of neem seed kernel extract with the 1 liter of water they mixed and uh, that is sprayed also to control the the potato uh, potato tuber moth and the other disease potato blight uh, so you can see the symptom of the blight disease so uh, these are the uh, the burning of the uh, leaves like the uh, lip blight lip blight disease so in this case uh, you can use the variety which have the blight resistance 
or uh, there is a uh, one recommendation spraying of agnihotra ash. Uh, this agnihotra ash as you discuss the homa farming. So, when you go for the homa farming, uh, we have discussed uh, briefly in the earlier classes. Uh, as homa farming as you have a copper uh, parts in that we put the dried cow dung cake, uh, raw rice and the ghee then the fume is created, created then this uh, slogan that it makes a uh, uh, chanting slogan it makes a vibrations around the, the atmosphere and that is done exactly at the sunset and sunrise and the ash is found the ash is left during the homa as agni that ash can be used for spraying and that can protect the crop from this uh, the blight disease. So, the ash around 200 gram of agni hotra ash soaked in 1 liter of cow urine for 15 days and diluted in 10 liters of water before spraying that means 200 gram of agni hotra ash with 10 liter of water that can be sprayed and that can regular spray may be 15 days intervals can be sprayed on the crop field. So, in this way it can protect the crop from uh, uh, this product of light and moreover this uh, the spraying the agni hotra ash also that is a that in there is information that it can increase the radiation intersection capacity of the crops. Uh, that also can help in the better growth and the better yield of the crop. And the other disease like virus disease uh, use uh, virus free uh, prototubers uh, uh, as uh, the rog, rog remove the virus affected plants regularly because immediately if, if a plant is affected by virus you can see the symptoms the wilting of the, the whole uh, because smaller leaves or thick leaves in the top, top portion of potato then the wilting of the plant also the viral disease. So, in that case you can remove the plants otherwise you can spray to other other, other crop uh, control the aphid vectors because these are the carriers of the virus uh, say aphid vector can be controlled by spraying 10 percent natal leaf extract on uh, regularly as a 15 days interval. Then nematode uh, uh, so likewise avoid growing potato year after year from the same field to protect the crop from any type of disease either the fungal disease bacterial disease, viral disease or this from the nematode, nematode. So, crop rotation as a principles of organic farming. So, this should be continued same crop should not be uh, grown year after year. So, uh, having a crop following the rotations crop with uh, uh, different vegetables or the green manure crops can protect the crop uh, from this nematode attack. Then application of uh, pseudomonas fluorescence. So, this can be uh, used at 10 kg per hectare to control this uh, nematode attack and the other cultural method because uh, showing the mustard as intercrop at the time of potato plantings and harvest the mustard greens and incorporates on 45th day at uh, day for the control of the potato cyst nematode. The, uh, the mustard crop can be as intercrop that can be grown um, in the potato field and this can be plowed can be turned back into the soils after 40 days when this is a green and succulent stage it can control the cyst nematode. And coming to uh, tomato, uh, tomato also belongs to a uh, same family as a potato that is a solanaceae family and this uh, the requirement is also uh, uh, tomato is a you can grow, you, you can grow throughout the year in India for starting from the either the Karib seasons, uh, Ravi seasons and the jet season can be grown. And it thrives well in temperatures around 10 degree Celsius to 30 degree Celsius with the optimum temperature range around 21 to 24 degree Celsius. And tomato is the well known for the lycopene that is a good source of the antioxidants and tomato is a good source of lycopene and lycopene uh, contents is higher is increased that the uh, weather around 18 to 26 degree Celsius temperature. And about water stress and long dry, dry periods as it causes cracking of the fruits or the bright sunshine at the time of fruit set helps to develop dark red colored fruits that is lycopene contents that also increases the bright sunshine hours and that is uh, antioxidants that is help that is a uh, has effect on the the damaging the cancer cells because because controlling the cancer disease lycopene is one of the important antioxidant. And the soil requirement for this potato uh, or sorry, uh, sorry tomato that is a sandy loam soil is best suited for this and the P can go pre in the neutral range around 6.56 to 7. This soil should be well prepared and labeled, uh, labeled by plowing the land around 4 to primary tillage and secondary tillage uh, done to make the land ready for the tomato planting. 
land preparation uh, land should be uh, should be uh, uh, prepared uh, uh, early by incorporating the organic matter so ridges and furrows they are made like uh, like potato also similar spacing can be because here the the spacing ridge spacing around 6 to 75 centimeter and the plant spacing within the row around 60 centimeter so you have you can provide the proper spacing and depending up it can be depending upon the variety type the ones the bushy type variety or straight variety you can have the variable spacing so that you can have optimum growth and development so nutrient management uh, uh, the dose is around n p2 5 k2o 100 180 kg per hectare n p2 5 k2o phosphorus requirement also preferred for the tomato uh, because uh, it's a it's, it helps in the fruit setting the seed farmers fruit setting and the better fruit development that's a uh, phosphorus and nitrogen also 100 kg and potash that's k2o 80 kg per hectare and calculation is same as of potato we discussed based on your source of nutrients you can you can calculate how much uh, organic so the different organic fertilizer required the sources also includes the for calcite dolomite you can limestone are used for the calcium magnesium mica for the potash rock phosphate or bone meal for the phosphorus blood meal or chelate nitrate for nitrogen is used as organic source of nutrient for this uh, tomato and this organic fertilizer usually applied at the time of the land preparation final land preparations and that can be mixed well on the in the ridges where the uh, potato seedling has to be planted and disease management you see the some of the control measures are the uh, for the potato there is a early blight the damping up and the fruit rot these are the very uh, as you can see these are the disease for the tomato tomato crops uh, because the you have, can have a supporting plant we give uh, physical support to the plants by sticks or some um, hanging by thread hanging also we do that one to uh, give a proper support to the plants plant uh, and also should be uh, on ridge in irrigated soil planting on well drained soil there should not be water accumulations and we can also spray to control this fungal disease but dust mixture that may be allowed in the organic farming say copper sulphate lime and water mix of copper sulphate lime water the bird dust mixture can be uh, applied and some control of viral disease say like tomato mosaic virus the leaf becomes discolored the coloring and also leaf becomes very short and thick in this case uh, uproot and burning the disease affected plants uh, as soon as they are noticed the, the best method to check the spread of this disease and also you can go for regular application of the as you described the prelim the introductory, introductory classes of the pest management uh, cow dung based or the cow, cow urine based application should be continued and there is a uh, the uh, Mm, uh, organic tomato versus conventional tomato if you see the quality a study conducted by researchers at the university of barcelona shows that organic uh, tomato contains higher levels of uh, uh, phenolic compounds so, than the conventional tomato because phenolic compounds this uh, has a good health benefits uh, they are found in many vegetables similarly the organic tomato that uh, juice and the ketchup that contains uh, higher polyphenol contents uh, than juice and ketchup made from conventionally uh, grown tomato because the conventionally uh, the polyphenols uh, are natural antioxidants of plant origins and are the extreme interest because uh, they are associated with reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and the degenerative diseases and some of uh, some forms of cancer. So, in uh, if you see the quality uh, in uh, the brief, so uh, there are some re research report uh, say the lower nitrate content and higher vitamin C and chlorogenic acid content to be the parameters most consistently differing from organically from the conventionally produced potato. So, uh, the organic potato uh, uh, they have the lower nitrate contents and also they have the higher vitamin C and the chlorogenic acid so, uh, contents higher in case of the organic produce as compared to the conventionally produced potato. And, uh, uh, other thing organic farming uh, caused a 25 percent marketable yield reduction with a higher percentage of uh, large tuber under conventional farming whereas uh, irrigation of uh, irrigation increase the marketable yield uh, and the percentage of large tuber. So, that means if you the yield point of view the organic farming has a lower yield from some they have report as compared to the conventional chemical farming. Then another is research, other research uh, Mitchell et al 2007 here they have reported 10 years mean level of uh, quercetin and cam, uh, camphorol. Uh, is a uh, polyphenols in organic tomato they are higher around 79-97 percent higher than those grown in the conventional natural poly, uh, antioxidants polyphenols they are good for the human health 
that control like this, like diabetes or the cancer, they can fight against the cancer. Growth has reduced in fruits uh, from uh, organic farming. Uh, why? Because uh, the growth was the yield may be lower, but the other components like the quality parameter like, like titrable acidity, soluble solid, total soluble solids contents and the concentration of vitamin C were higher by 29 percent, 57 percent and 55 percent as compared to uh, conventional farming. So, if, from many research we have seen that yield, some cases yield becomes comparable, you are using the compost or the organic sources that can provide the meet the, the required nutrient demand of the crop, especially nitrogen, phosphorus and potash. You can meet the yield levels as good as the chemical fertilizers and having these organic sources, you have the added benefit that you can have the many secondary metabolites or the quality of the fruits are better in organic farming as compared to uh, chemical farming. Okay. Thank you very much.